Uh, hello, my name is Justin, and today we're going to be discussing the regulation of sperm maturation in germinal cell epithelium. And basically, we're going to be discussing how sperm cells mature um, and what places they mature while they travel through the male uh, reproductive system. So uh, first, I want to discuss the overview of the male anatomy and the male reproductive system. Um, it's generally made up of two parts. There's the internal genitalia and the external genitalia. The internal genitalia is going to be made up of parts of the prostate, the urethra, the bull, the bulbal urethral gland, and the seminal gland, vesicle. And those are all going to play key, all play key roles in actual sperm maturation and they're all internal and then the external genitalia lie outside of the body and that's usually the penis and the scrotum and the scrotum down here is actually holding on to the testes and the reason why specifically the testes is located outside of the uh, male anatomy is because they produce uh, spermatogonium and spermatozoa, which need to be produced at a lower temperature than the human body, where the human body is usually around 37 degrees Celsius. Um, sperm and uh, male reproductive cells are produced at a temperature that's around 5 degrees Celsius lower, so around like 34 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Celsius. So because of that, it needs to lie outside of uh, the male anatomy and next we're going to discuss uh, within the testes there are certain se uh, segments that are called the, the seminiferous tubules, tubules and that is going to be where the, the, the creation of the initial sperm cells are going to be and those are called spermatogenesis, um, sp uh, spermatogenesis. Um, which is going to be the production and maturation of spermatogonia um, over here, you see that it's split up in the three, into three uh, different sections. There's the basal lamina, which is the surrounding area. There's the interstitial space in, in the center. Um, and in the inside is the lumen. And what's happening is you have the uh, spermatogonia, which are these green cells right here that are actually moving inward towards the lumen. And they're going to be produced from the outside to the inside. And there's a lot of promoter cells also around that are help maturing it. There's specifically Ledwig cells, which are going to be producing testosterone. And that testosterone is going to be then combining with uh, APB, ABP cells at the serotonin cells um, over here are also going to be producing when the ABB cells, the serotonin cells, and the testosterone from the Ledwig cells, when they combine, to the uh, spermatogonia, it's going to help promote maturation of it and provide essential nutrients needed to actually produce a mature uh, sperm for reproduction. Yes, so um, hormonal control of spermatogenesis. So for all this to actually be occurring, for Ledwig cells to produce testosterone and for the serotonin cells to produce uh, ABP cell um, hormone, this all has to actually be uh, created from the uh, something called uh, hypothalamic uh, pituitary gonadal axis, which is a hormonal cascade, um, and this again begins. This begins in the um, the hypothalamus, which uh, releases GnRH, um, and that GnRH then travels down to the pituitary gland, the anterior pituitary, and that tells it to release FSH and LH. FSH and LH then travel towards the the seminiferous tubu uh, tubules, and the um, and it travels. Uh, towards the Ledwig and the Sertoli cells, and it tells it to release its respective testosterone and ABP proteins. And once uh, enough ABB and testosterone is produced, it's also going to inhibit uh, FSH and LH, which is going to inhibit GnRH, which is going to inhibit FSH and LH. So there's also a negative feedback going on. So if there's then too much testosterone, you're not going to have, you're going to decrease GnRH, which is going to decrease FSH and LH. So, so now we're going to actually discuss the maturation of spermatogonia into spermatozoa. And again, the spermatogonia are on the outside. And what's happening is uh, GnRH of the anterior pituitary, GnRH is releasing FSH and LH. And that FSH and LH from the anterior pituitary is going to um, promote leg dig cells to actually make testosterone. That testosterone then is going to enter the basal lamina of the seminiferous tubule, which is again in the testes.
and it's going to promote actual uh, spermatogonia to mature into spermatozoa. And that's going to start with, you start with the spermatogona, which are going to both divide into two different primary spermatocytes. Now these and the primary spermatocytes are going to be through mitosis and it's going to be, they're going to be different from each other. And those primary spermatocytes are going to go into, they're going to divide into secondary spermatocytes, which then create spermatotids. And um, these spermatotids are then going to create spermatozoa, a uh, spermatozoa. And spermatozoa is going to be the final product. It's the sperm cell that is going to actually travel through the, uh, the vas deferens and be what's ejaculated out after it binds with some with uh, different seminal fluids um, and uh, this whole process in this whole process you're able to produce around uh, 1500 to 2000 sperm a second which is a lot less energy than a female were to produce a single egg which takes a whole month um, and uh, yeah and yeah, so um, and then next we're going to talk about uh, you know, going from a spermatid to a spermatozoa, um, where a spermatozoa is going to have, you know, it's going to have a head at one end, a tail at the other. It's going to have mitochondria in the center. And it's going to have an ac a, like a, an acrosome head. Um, that's actually going to take uh, place in four different steps. Um, the four steps uh, start with the Golgi phase. And the Golgi phase is when the head starts to form. So over here, you could see that this is kind of like the Golgi phase. The head is starting to form. You also have is also when you have DNA that's going to start to um, kind of condense and package itself together. And then next you're going to have the um, next is the uh, the gap, the cap phase or the acrosome phase. Now the acrosome is a very important part of the sperm spermatozoa located at the head. And that's actually going to be used to actually uh, break through the egg's protective layer and penetrate the DNA. So that's um, going to be formed during the second phase. Um, the third phase is going to be the tail phase. And that's when actually the tail is going to be produced. Now the tail is is vital and vitally important for the survival, for the, for the sperm to actually um, bind to an, to an egg and create a zygote because uh, it allows movement um, and this movement is done by uh, and this movement is allowed to be done through the uh, microtubules of the tail um, and uh, the reason why like sperm over here in this mid piece area have a lot of uh, mitochondria this mid piece is all made up of mitochondria and that mitochondria is done to produce energy for the tail the microtubules of the tail to actually move and whip itself through um, the uterus to actually bind to the egg. And then the final phase is the maturing phase. And this is just when any kind of excess cytoplasm here is going to be removed and phagocytized by the Sertoli cells. And again, this is all, once you have this uh, final spermatozoa, this is going to be in the lumen over here of the duct of the seminiferous tubule. And then from there, it's going to travel out of and through the epidermis and then through the the, the final spermatozoa is going to then travel out through the uh, vas deferens and then actually um, get some semi get some uh, fluids through the seminal vesicles and then actually be ejaculated out and hopefully mature an egg. But yeah, that's uh, really uh, that's the maturation of a sperm cell.